Hello class, in this video I'm going to introduce the concept of sleep, which is a very important state of consciousness that we learn about in the Year 12 curriculum. Um, I've got the key knowledge point here from the, uh, key, uh, from the study design, uh, which explains that sleep, we need to learn about sleep as a regular and naturally occurring altered state of consciousness. And there's a few other key terms. It's a naturally occurring altered state of consciousness that follows a circadian rhythm and involves the ultradian rhythm of REM and NREM stages one to four. So in this uh, slide, I'll introduce those terms and those concepts before you can keep going uh, with some other work yourself. Few uh, interesting things about sleep. The longest period of time that anyone has ever gone without sleep, for me it's uh, 36 hours, that was pretty full on. Um, but the longest anyone's ever gone is 18 days, 21 hours and 10 minutes. Later in the course, we'll find out some of the effects of that that it has on you psychologically and physically. Um, we've already learned that being awake for just 17 hours is the equivalent of having a BAC of 0.05, so being above the legal drinking limit. So you can imagine uh, times that 17 hours make it 18 days. That's, that's pretty bad. Some animals sleep for different amounts of time. The animal that sleeps the longest is the brown bat, which spends most of its day in sleep, only awake for four hours a day, basically. Meanwhile, other animals sleep for a lot less. The giraffe sleeps for less than two hours a day. Uh, later on, when we think about the purpose of sleep, we'll think about why that might be for different animals. But regardless, we do spend about 27 years of our lives, on average, asleep. So it's obviously a very important state of consciousness for human beings. Um, ducks, they're a bit, uh, a bit more creative than us. They uh, sleep with half of their brain awake at a time. That allows them to be alert enough to deal with predators while still getting that period of restfulness. But they still do need that period of restfulness. They just rest half of their brain at a time. Elephants uh, sleep in some funny habits. Uh, for most of their sleep cycle, they're standing up, but for, um, for REM sleep, which we'll learn about in a moment, they actually lie down. So they're, they're active through the night in a way that's different to humans. So it sleep's a pretty, pretty weird and fascinating thing. Uh, so let's uh, talk about it a little bit more. So we spend, as I said before, 27 years of our life asleep. Um, but you might struggle to actually define what is sleep. How do you actually uh, talk about it, I guess, scientifically? Here's the definition from our textbook. Sleep is defined as a reversible behavioral state of perceptual disengagement, disengagement from and unresponsiveness to the environment. Few key words there. Reversible, it's not permanent. If we're permanently asleep, that might be a coma. Uh, it, it could be death, not really, uh, but a coma would be an irreversible state or being knocked unconscious, an irreversible state of perceptual disengagement. Uh, it is reversible. We go into it and out of it on a daily basis usually. It's a behavioral state because it is something observable. It is. Uh, it does go along with certain actions, but there's also a lot going on internally. It's marked by its... Um, by this perceptual disengagement from the environment and unresponsiveness to the environment. Uh, if you think about what it means to be asleep, it's a time when you're unaware, you're, you're detached from the world around you. You're not hearing and, and seeing what's going on, so you're not responding to the world around you. That's our textbook definition of sleep. Now, typically, but not always, sleep does involve being in a comfortable position, usually lying down. Uh, people do look relaxed, uh, though it does say apparently relaxed there. Um, drop my pen. It does say apparently relaxed because maybe uh, internally the person's not actually relaxed or uh, in some stages in sleep your muscles might actually be more tense. Um, but, uh, but from the outside you look relaxed, your eyes closed um, and all those sorts of things that we might use if we we're trying to work out if someone was asleep. But these behavioral indicators do not necessarily indicate sleep. Uh, someone could be lying down with their eyes closed and not be asleep, or on the flip side, someone might be um, uh, might be asleep while standing up or with their eyes open. It's rare, but it does happen, especially when people are really tired. So that begs the question: How do we actually uh, discuss sleep if if um, these things aren't always the case? What do we do when we're discussing sleep? Well, we need to go back to um, 
to the different uh, characteristics of consciousness. Um, we learnt this uh, mnemonic, an advanced cheater can pass every single test, which helps us to remember all these different characteristics of consciousness. And we want to be talking about these when we are discussing um, when we're discussing consciousness. Uh, so, in terms of awareness, hopefully you realise that your level of awareness when you're asleep is way down. You don't um, notice the world around you. You're unaware of the world around you. Um, your attention is uh, not focused, so it's not focused on the external environment. And in fact, your attention can switch a lot, which will links in with content limitations. When you're asleep, your brain can go from one idea to another and sort of flow in a stream of consciousness sort of um, fashion so that you have lowered content limitations. Uh, that also means things can come up that you wouldn't normally think about when you're awake. If you think about some of the bizarre dreams you've ever had, that's your low level of content limitations. In terms of controlled and automatic processes, we're not going to be very good with the controlled processes when we're asleep, but automatic processes such as breathing uh, will continue to happen. Perceptual and cognitive distortions. I talked about weird dreams before. We have distorted thinking and distorted... Uh, dreams are essentially a type of hallucination, right? You believe you're seeing things that aren't really there. Uh, so your, your thinking and your senses are, are based on your imagination. They're, they're fabricated, so it's uh, very distorted. In terms of emotional awareness, um, you sleep is very interesting because often, um, if you think about something like a nightmare, Sleep can be a way to experience emotions that you wouldn't normally um, experience when you're awake. You might control and suppress certain emotions when you're awake, but they come out when you're asleep. If you have a stress dream or, an, or a you know, really sad or disturbing dream that might be based on what's been happening uh, when you're awake, but you're refusing to focus on it or thinking of, think about it. So emotional awareness or emotional control, I guess, is reduced. And, um, and you have less regulation of your emotions and you have um, perhaps less awareness of how you're feeling uh, because you've got that lowered control. I just mentioned control. You have reduced self-control when you're asleep. Uh, certainly, you know, we can do embarrassing things when we're asleep, like fart in our sleep or um, talk in our sleep. We don't have control over ourselves. And as previously said, you don't have uh, usually don't have a sense of control over your dreams or your thinking either. So you've got greatly reduced self-control. And time orientation. If you've ever done that thing where you're drifting off, um, uh, you, you fall asleep on the couch or something and someone wakes you up and you say, oh, I just had my eyes open for a moment. But actually, um, you've been uh, asleep for two hours, you know, while you've finished a movie or something. That demonstrates how your time orientation is... is um, is reduced to you. You don't have a good sense of the passing of time. Likewise, you might be in a dream and think that a long time has passed because in the dream a lot's happened, but it might actually only be seconds or minutes of real world time. So it can go both ways. So anytime we're talking about sleep as an altered state of consciousness, a really low, um, low level of awareness, you want to be talking about all of these characteristics, just like we do for other states of consciousness. Now, uh, uh, sleep sleep relates to two different biological rhythms a, a rhythm is a sort of a, a repeating process right if you think about the rhythm in music it's the beat that repeats our bodies have rhythms and we've got all sorts of different rhythms in our body we have um, times when we're hungry and not we have times when we're tired and not uh, we have different cycles in our body our digestive system our um, the menstrual cycle all sorts of biological cycles I guess breathing in a sense is is one biological rhythm perhaps maybe that's stretching the definition a bit far um, there's two different types of biological rhythms actually there's three uh, but two that we focus on when we're discussing sleep one is the circadian rhythm uh, circadian relates to two words, um, circa and dian. Circa, hopefully you see, sounds a bit like circle, or it sort of means around about, right? A circle, it's around this level. Dian relates to the word day. So, quite simply, circadian just refers to around a day. Things that happen at about a day at a time, you know, about every 24 hour period. So there's lots of things uh, that have a 24-hour cycle, and we're going to talk about the sleep-wake cycle as the main one. 
Um, we do sleep for approximately seven to eight hours a night every 24 hours. It's that repeating 24 hour period. I'll come back to these other things later. Um, so here is a 24 hour period going from 9 p.m. through to 9 p.m. Um, and this is actually tracking our body temperature, but our body temperature actually follows our uh, level of drowsiness. Um, so you can see this person uh, presume uh, is asleep in this gray area between here and here. And you can see their body temperature drops as they go through the sleep cycle. Um, most people will wake up probably around 8 a.m. for the sake of argument. They're awake, their body temperature increases and then starts to drop again as they get drowsy and head back into sleep. So this, um, this body temperature pattern follows that circadian rhythm. Our body gets colder in the periods where we're drowsy and should be asleep and our internal body temperature gets warmer, hotter uh, when we should be awake and that follows a 24 hour cycle. There's other things um, that uh, help to influence the circadian rhythm of sleep. If you think about what are some things that happen around this time? Well, one big thing is we get daylight, right? The rhythm of the sun helps us to maintain this circadian 24 hour rhythm. Um, and later on, we'll look at some people who've been in places like uh, living in caves or living in, in Antarctica or something like that, where they don't have the sun reinforcing um, the 24 hour rhythm. And so uh, that, that skews their, the circadian rhythm of, of the sleep-wake cycle. But daylight is a key one. Um, and that's why it's also really important that you don't, um, like I'm doing right now in, in the late evening, uh, it's really important that you don't uh, look at screens or have bright lights um, right before bed because that's telling your brain, you know, around here where you should be starting to get drowsy, it's saying daylight, this means wake up. There's some stuff going on internally that you'll read about um, that that responds to the daylight and controls that sleep-wake cycle. So make sure you read about the, um, the internal processes, the hormones and the parts of the brain that are involved in that. So daylight's one thing. We've got lots of other things that help to enforce this 24-hour circadian rhythm. Uh, things like school or work, right? If most people's work day starts around 8 or 9 a.m., or school day starts at 8 or 9 a.m., and this forces us to be awake at that point, which will help to maintain that 24-hour rhythm. Um, there's other things that happen, you know, around 8 a.m., around 12, around 6, we're going to have meals. And so it helps to, again, establish that 24-hour period as our digestion will work in with um, the bigger 24-hour sleep-wake cycle and that rhythm. Um, that's... Uh, so that's, that's three factors. Uh, there's probably a few more, but they're three key factors that help us to maintain that 24-hour repeated circadian rhythm. Meanwhile, uh, we don't just have the circadian rhythm, we also have the ultradian rhythm. Um, what's, what's interesting is while, while the sleep-wake cycle is circadian, it goes 24 hours, right? Awake for about, um, what would it be? Awake for about 16 hours, asleep for about eight, repeat every 24 hours. Sleep itself has an ultradian rhythm, or ultradian. Um, same thing, dian means day, like we said before. And if you think about ultra, if you describe something as being ultra, you're saying it's, it's extra, you're saying it's um, more than, it's greater than. So this is extra to, or more than a day. Things that happen more frequently than 24 hours. Right? So it's a recurrent cycle that is repeated within a 24-hour cycle. It, it happens more frequently than 24 hours. And so um, we'll learn in a moment that uh, sleep has usually 90-minute cycles. Within the, say, eight hours of sleep, there's a repeated cycle that goes for about 90 minutes. Uh, incidentally, there's the third type, infradian, um, and this is cycles that take more than 24 hours, like the menstrual cycle that takes about 28 days. But we'll focus on ultradian, uh, referring to sleep. So sleep has two main um, main divisions. S we spend about eighty percent of our time in NREM sleep, non-REM sleep, and you can see here there's four stages of sleep that we'll talk about in a moment. But about eighty percent of your time spent in that, and then about twenty percent is spent in this really interesting time called REM sleep. REM stands for rapid. I movement. It's a period of sleep where um, 
even though your eyes are closed and your body seems relaxed, your eyes are actually moving under the surface. And if you've ever seen someone, you can actually see their eyes moving around under their eyelids, which is kind of creepy to look at, but um, kind of cool as well. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but each type of sleep has different um, features and functions, different purposes. 80% in NREM, 20% in REM. But focusing just on the ultradian uh, sleep patterns, here you can see a typical night's sleep. You see the person starts awake, and over the course of about 90 minutes, right? We're about 90 minutes here, 1.5 hours. Um, they go through a complete sleep cycle. Um, they go down from stage one, down to stage two, three, and four, with stages three and four being the deepest levels of sleep. Um, and then very quickly they move up through those stages and have a little period of REM sleep. This pink uh, bit here is representing REM sleep. Then again, down through the stages over the period of about 90 minutes and then back up to REM. Notice this time a little bit more REM. As the night progresses, they stop going into the deepest level of sleep. You see here it only goes down to stage three, but now they have more REM. Another 90 minutes, this time only down into stage two, an even greater period of REM, and then hopefully just stage two, a little bit of REM, and then awake again. So a few features to point out there, I'll just wipe all that away. A few features to point out. First of all, that it does seem to happen every 90 minutes. That's, um, that's a good pattern of sleep. Not everyone's you know exactly 90 minutes, obviously, but it does seem to be typically 90 minutes, that ultra DN rhythm within sleep. Uh, you see that the person um, has deeper sleep, that it's called um, deep sleep or slow wave sleep, stages three and four, uh, more in the first half of the night and less and less in the second half of the night, which has implications for if someone only gets, say, four hours of sleep, they'll have had more of this deep sleep. But because you get more and more REM sleep in the, as the night progresses, someone who only has four hours sleep will have less REM sleep and that has implications for how rested they feel and, and what their body's been able to achieve in that time through sleep. We'll talk more about the purposes of sleep in a later lesson. The final thing I want you to notice is that because it goes through this repeated pattern of moving down through stages one, two, three, four, and then up again, you can imagine that if you wake someone up at one of these peaks when they're only in stage one or REM sleep, they're gonna wake up uh, a lot more naturally. They're almost awake at that point anyway. If you wake someone up when they're at this point or when they wake up naturally at the end of this cycle, they're going to feel a lot better at that point. Whereas if you interrupt someone's sleep, say here, after, what's that, two and a half hours, they're gonna feel really drowsy. They were, you know, in that deep sleep and they've been forced into wakefulness. Um, if you've ever had that experience where you wake up, you know, at 3 a.m., uh, that might be right here. You wake up at 3 a.m. and you feel completely awake and alert. And you're like, oh, but it's 3 a.m., this sucks. I'm gonna feel so tired later on. So you force yourself, you know, you stay in bed, you, you force yourself to get back to sleep. You might then fall back into a lower level of sleep just for the sake of argument. Let's say you fall all the way back in stage four and then your alarm goes off here at a good time. You've had seven hours and you feel so tired. Well, that might be because you weren't at that peak where you were nearly awake anyway. You'd actually gone back down into a deeper level of sleep. And so your body's not feeling or your mind's not feeling ready to wake up. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's that's probably an experience you can relate to, and hopefully this uh, this ultradian rhythm helps to illustrate why. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, that just a bit of an overview to a few key terms: sleep, circadian rhythm, ultradian rhythm. Uh, good luck unpacking it all and digging deeper into this content.